Hi there boys and girls, welcome to lesson 6.4, Common Denominators and Equivalent Fractions. Our essential question for tonight is, how can you rewrite a pair of fractions so that they have a common denominator? Please turn in your Go Math book to lesson 6.4. So let's look at this first question example. We have the fraction 1 -fifth and 1 half. Do you notice how our denominators are not the same? Our goal is to find a common denominator, so that way you can set yourself up to do addition or subtraction later on. So let's go ahead and look at 1 -fifth and 1 half. My denominators are not the same, but we can make them the same, because if you think about your multiples of 5 and your multiples of 2, you will eventually hit the number 10, which is the same number for a denominator. We call that a common denominator because common means alike. Now we're going to go ahead and find equivalent fractions for that. So if you have 1 fifth with the new denominator of 10 and you have 1 half with the denominator of 10, you can make an equivalent fraction. This is something that we learned in fourth grade. 1 fifth equals how many tenths? You can multiply 5 times what is 10, which would be 2. So whatever you multiply the denominator by, you multiply the numerator by. So 1 fifth is the same value as 2 tenths, and 1 half has the same value as 5 tenths. So now we have answered our first question. If 10 is a multiple of 5 and 2, our common denominator will be 10. And then our equivalent fractions would be 2 tenths and 5 tenths. All right, so let's move on. So let's go ahead and do number two together. We have one fourth and two thirds. We want to find a common denominator first. So think of your multiples of four. We have four, eight, twelve. And when for three, we have three, six, nine, twelve. You should always try to find the least common denominator, which would be the one that shows up first when you list your multiples because that will be easiest when you ever want to simplify fractions. So I have found that my least common denominator would be 12. So now let's go ahead and find equivalent fractions. 1 fourth, 2 thirds. If my new denominator is 12, 1 fourth and 2 thirds equals how many twelfths? Well, 4 times what is 12? That would have to be 3. So whatever you multiply your denominator by, you must multiply your numerator by. So we have 3 twelfths. And for 2 thirds over here, 3 times what is 12? We should say 4. So 2 times 4 is 8. So we should have 3 twelfths and 8 twelfths would be the fractions that are equivalent to 1 fourth and 2 thirds. All right, let's take a look at number four. We have the denominators of five and three. They're not common yet, so let's make them common. Think of your multiples of five. You have five, 10, 15, 20. And let's stop there and let's look at our multiples of three. Three, six, nine, 12, 15. All right, I see a common denominator. You should all know that 15 would be my common denominator. And now let's go ahead and work on finding equivalent fractions. So now we're going to make the denominator as 15. So 3 fifths equals how many fifteenths? And 1 third equals how many fifteenths? All right, if you said that you had to multiply 5 times 3 to get 15, so 3 times 3 would be 9, 9 fifteenths would be your first answer. And for 1 third, you should say you have to multiply 3 times 5 to get 15. So 1 times 5 is 5. So, so there you have your equivalent fraction for 3 fifths, which is 9 fifteenths, and 1 third, which is 5 fifteenths. Now this is using your least common denominator. Okay, so for number 6, start off by listing your multiples of 6 and 4. Find your least common denominator and write it right there on this line, and then I want you to find your equivalent fractions using your new common denominator. Go ahead and press pause and we'll see if our answers match. Okay, for this one you should have said that your common denominator was 12, because when you list your multiples of 6, you have 6, 12, or 4, 8, 12. That's your least common denominator.
So 1 6 should equal how many 12s? You should have said 2 12s. And for 1 fourth equals how many 12s? You should have said 3 12s. Congratulations if you got the same answer I did. Okay, let's move on to number 7. Okay, so for number 7, the directions say use the least common denominator to write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. So we're still doing the same thing we did on the last one. You're going to find the denominator that will be common for these two denominators, and then you're going to make equivalent fractions. So let's try this one together. If I think about my multiples of 6, I'm going to have 6, 12, 18. I'm going to stop right there because I'm predicting in my head my multiples of 9 as I'm making my multiples of 6, and I know that my multiples of 9 would be 9, 18. That way I don't um, keep going and waste some time. I know I can stop right there. So let's go ahead and make our equivalent fractions. 5 6 is equal to how many eighteenths? And 2 ninths is equal to how many eighteenths? Alright, let's see if you can fill it in before I do. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and multiply 6 times 3 to get 18. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 3 and I should get 15. So you should say 5 6 is equivalent to 15 eighteenths. And 2 ninths equals how many eighteenths? You should say 9 times 2 is 18, so 2 times 2 is 4. So these are your two fractions that have the denominator of 18. Alright, go ahead and pause your video for number 8. I want you to try this one on your own and let's see if we agree. Find your equivalent fractions for each fraction using your least common denominator. Your denominators are 12 and 8. Go ahead and press pause now. Okay, boys and girls, you should have said that your common denominator was 24, and 1 12th is equal to 2 24ths, and 3 8 is equal to 9 24 Because 12 times 2 is 24, so 1 times 2 is 2, and 8 times 3 is 24, so 3 times 3 is 9. Whatever you multiply your denominator by, you multiply the numerator by. Okay, let's go on. Let's take a look at our real-world problem down below. It says, Ella spends two-thirds of an hour practicing the piano each day. She also spends one-half of an hour jogging. What is the least common denominator of the fractions? If you want to try this one on your own, you can press pause before I explain how. Okay, for this one, you should have said two-thirds and one-half and you're going to look at your multiples of 3 and 2 to find your common denominator. My, let's start out with 3. If I list my multiples of 3, I have 3, 6, 9, 12. And if I list my multiples of 2, I have 2, 4, 6. Well, I can stop right there because I can see the least one that comes up is 6. That's the first one that we see. So you should have said your least common denominator will be 6. So that should be the answer to that question. All right, let's move on to number 11. For number 11, it says, in a science experiment, a plant grew three-fourths of an inch in one week and one-half of an inch in the next week. Use a common denominator to write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. So we have to find a common denominator for one-half and three-fourths. Go ahead and pause the video and go ahead and find your least common denominator to write an equivalent fraction for each fraction. Okay, everybody, you should have said that your common denominator was 8. Now, that would be the least one. You could have found other ones like 12, but I would always encourage you to look for the least one, which in this case is 8. Now, it says 1 half equals how many 8s? You should have said it equals 4 eighths, And 3 fourths equals how many 8s? You should have said 6 eighths. I sure do hope that we agreed on these answers. All right, let's move on to the back side now. Go ahead and answer questions 1 and 2, read the questions carefully and see what they're asking, and then do questions 3 through 6 for review. I encourage you to write at the top of the page to see if you are a 1, 2, 3, or 4 for the different levels of how you feel. Please write at the very top of your homework page because I like to glance at that as I come around and check just to see where you're at. And tomorrow in class we're going to do some practice problems to get really good at finding common denominators. Alright, have an awesome night. See you tomorrow.